You know, I've never understood why any women are religious. I mean, I guess I understand the pagans and stuff to a certain degree, and I understand that a lot of women aren't really in a position where they can escape their faith. But why any woman would voluntarily remain a Catholic or a Muslim or a Jew or a Mormon, it just strikes me as a, a black man renewing his membership in the KKK. But to their credit, I suppose the only hope of reforming the institutional misogyny of these churches is from the inside. I mean, I prefer the everyone bells and suddenly they're less powerful than a suburban book club method myself, but that might not be realistic in the short term. So I'd like to dedicate this particular week in misogyny to a few of the hardworking gals trying to de-chauvinize their various religions. We'll start in Vatican City, where the Vatican's ongoing synod on the family will discuss pivotal social issues like divorce, premarital relationships, and LGBT issues, all without the aid of a single female voice or vote. Unlike previous incarnations of this meeting, however, the Vatican was nice enough to allow 30 women to audit the synod. As long as they sit in the back, don't speak during the grown-up time, and don't distract the men with their heathenous bosoms. Now, a lot of attention is paid to the Vatican's outdated bullshit views on things like contraception, homosexuality, and the ordination of women. And those are all things that we should be paying a lot more attention to. More than we pay to the Pope's encyclical on climate change, that's for sure. But one of the really despicable things that often gets glazed over is their downright prehistoric views on divorce. Look, the demonization of divorce is one of the main things that keeps religious women trapped in abusive relationships. Women are told from birth that a marriage is like a living, breathing thing that must be saved at all costs often place the sanctity of marriage ahead of their own personal safety and the safety of their children. And people die over this. Any religion that would summarily discourage divorce is a danger to women everywhere. And while the Pope's opening for the Synod leaves very little hope that the Church will advance their views on LGBT issues into at least last century, I am keeping my fingers crossed that they'll at the very least mend their generation blind position on divorce. As former President of Ireland Mary McAleese pointed out, quote, if I wanted expertise on the family, I honestly cannot say that the first thing that would come to mind would be to call together 300 celibate males who, between them, that we know of, have never raised a child, end quote. And from the Catholics, we'll turn our eyes to a religion that makes them look like teenagers. America's oldest Jewish congregation is facing a lawsuit after allegedly firing Alana Schultz, the program director of 11 years, for the unforgivable crime of getting pregnant before her wedding. Now keep in mind what kind of a low-grade sin this is. This is a woman having sex with a man she is engaged to in a religion where she is discouraged from using birth control. According to the lawsuit, she informed her boss that she was pregnant before she left for her honeymoon, and when she returned, she learned that she had been replaced in her absence. They offered her six-week severance, which would have been a hell of a lot nicer if they hadn't excluded medical coverage from it. So yes, not only did they take away the six-and-a-half-month pregnant newlywed's income, but they also took away her medical insurance. The congregation is throwing a lot of excuses at the wall, of course. They've tried claiming it isn't sexist since they'd have fired a man for premarital sex, too, which is probably bullshit, but it doesn't matter since men don't get pregnant. So at best, you can fault them for de facto sexism. They've also tried to hide behind religious freedom and, of course, deny that the firing had anything whatsoever to do with her pregnancy and, alternatively, that she was never fired at all. In case you're wondering, by the way, yes, firing a pregnant woman for being pregnant is a violation of both federal and New York state labor laws. But, of course, religions don't have to follow those laws because religions don't have to follow laws in this fucking country. So there isn't much hope of a successful outcome for Alana, except maybe a kickstart on her path toward atheism. So, Alana, in case you're listening out there, doll, welcome to the club. We should got here under better circumstances. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.